Welcome to episode 34 of Taker Points. I'm your host, Ronan Scott. Taker Points is the GA chat show which looks at um, all issues regarding Ulster GA. Um, and this week uh, we're looking at success and winners. And we've got three guests on who have recently won their senior county championships. Uh, Dilly Jones from Dungana and Cl uh, Thomas Clarks is on after they beat Trillick in the final. Shane Carey from Scott Sound and Monaghan and Kevin O'Boyd from Cargan. So let's get started. Okay, I'd like to welcome Dilly Jones to the show. Uh, Dilly is one of the Dungan and Clark's men who remarkably won the senior championship beating Trillick in the final and bringing the title back to the club for the first time in 64 years. An incredible achievement um, and I wanted to get Dilly on to ask him about that achievement. Um, so, Dilly, thanks for taking part this week. Um, I'd just like to start by asking you, what has the past week been like with regard with regards to celebrating the win? It's, I'd say it's probably been the best week of my life, you know. Something we always, always talked about and to have it have it there in front of you is, and work for it and win it, is, it's, it's unbelievable, you know. When we went up the town and, um, you know, we've seen the faces on On Street, as, as I mentioned in another interview, um, that's what it's all about and um, you know we, the congratulations we were getting from you know all sides of the community and um, even when we went up you know the fireworks that was going off and um, you know everything going into, into PJs and going up into Higgins and, and Magaliers you know and, and seeing how, how happy everyone was it, it just was just amazing it was you know as I say the best week of, of art of the team's lives and you know, I really hope everyone enjoyed it and um, it's something we'll never ever forget. Okay, how important was the win for the club? Oh, it's it's massive for the club, you know, for all the work that's been put in over the past few years to get us to this point from where we were, you know, we want to inspire the next generation and, you know, we also wanted to win it for the, the men that, you know, have men and women who give all their lives for Dungan Thomas Clarks and they never ever seen anything like this, you know. Some of them might have been alive um back in nineteen fifty six, sixty four years ago, but you know, to see we we heard so many times like in Day a Happy Man and you know, to hear things like that there is it's it's phenomenal. You know, we wanna be back being giants of throwing football and um, you know it's just when you put it all together it's it's a massive the victory. Even, you know, during youth level, when we were in finals or won finals or lost finals or whatever it was, the clubs, the managers used to come in and say, you know, you boys need to get to the Clarks to back to where they used to be. And that's something we always strive towards. And, you know, even my daddy said, you know, this is something that you're going to have to do. And just to, to have that for, for the main aim to win this club in O'Neill Cup to, to succeed is just phenomenal, phenomenal. It was a dramatic final because it finished on extra time and penalties. But um, what what do you think the key was to winning? I think um, we adopted the Throne GA motto: refuse to lose. And if you look at our matches, you know you look at the Lock McCrory game. We scored the equaliser in the last kick. Our bow game, same as that, to force extra time during extra time in the Argyll game. Uh, they scored a goal before half time, and a lot of teams would have laid down. But these these the, the group that we have, there was a togetherness about us, there, was, there really was, it was a bond of brothers, it, it was a complete team effort and, you know, it showed that, we never ever give for, give up for each other and, um, you know, it helped us along through it. You have to give credit to the management for instilling that belief in us, you know, um, Chris Terry and Collie Holmes, you know, the training was exceptional, um, everything we did, you know, it was to the, to the best of everyone's ability and, we just we can't thank them enough for for pushing us on. You know, during pre season, we had you know our six week block of pre season gym. Went f for a running out in dark dark rainy nights. You know, even in the Ulster, Ulster League when the O'Neill Cup was 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 so far away, we we still went on beaten and only for COVID we could have went a bit further in it. But you know, we really created a habit of winning. I think that we ended up with fourteen wins and and one draw. So, you know the team and, and all the back room and everyone that was there you know but but most importantly the, the players you know 
players have to go out and win the games. So we all put the head down, put the shoulder to the wheel, and uh, you know it's it, it that was key. What do you think the win will do for the club? Oh, the wins, you know, it's the things it'll do for the club is is remarkable. You know, even after the Argyle game, reaching the final, I think somebody was saying up at the Clark's Oaks, that's what we call our youth teams. I think there was something eight, eight or ten more more faces in the under eights and the under tens. You know, from from all sides of the community. You know, as it's well documented that um, there's a lot of foreign nationals in the town now. So you know, we want to get them in. We want to create a culture. We want to you know get the parents in. Um, get new people in helping people maybe who haven't been about the club in in years. Get them back and they uh, you know help out with a bit of fundraising, coaching. You know, help the boys that are already there. You know. We did have a ticket draw going last year and started off so well and the COVID thing um, put a dampener on that and we had to put it back. But, you know, we're trying to get new club rooms and new field for, for all the, for all these young ones coming up. And, you know, we want to really, really create that culture of, of an O'Neill Cup. It, like that victory was our 11th O'Neill Cup in the club's history, but, but it was the last one was in 1956. So, you know, we don't want to wait that long for another one. And, you know, we want to create a sense of togetherness around the club. Um, you know, we're all Clark's men and women. We all have the one goal. We want to get as many, you know, younger teams winning and creating that habit of winning and, and going on to, to compete for O'Neill Cups. So. Okay, and what's next for you in the coming weeks? <laughs> I'd say um, probably get the sleeping pattern back <laughs> back in the last week. has just been, been madness. Some of the boys will have some stories to tell. Um, but yeah, I get back into a routine, back back into the gym, you know, keeping fit for next year, and um, most importantly, getting the O'Neill Cup around the town, um, get everyone, you know, make the most of it, you know, get that real sense of pride, and um, you know, hopefully, depending on the COVID, you know, have a few nights or whatever, or people can come up and you know get their photos or whatever with it. But um, yeah, I hope to do that, but. Personally, for me, um, I'm just after graduating from Jornstein, uh, for a, a from a computer science degree, so um, hopefully I, I can't put it off until the football is over. So I'll have to try and put the head down and, and maybe get full time work there. So that's what's coming up for me. It's great. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to welcome uh, Cargan's uh, Kevin O'Boyle on the show. Cargan won three in a row, beating Craigan in the final recently. Um, but it was particularly important for Kevin because he'd been coming back from injuries. So, Kevin, thanks for coming on the show and congratulations. How have celebrations went since you've won? Yeah, the celebrations were, were just class. The, anytime you win the championship, is, it's, it's feelings deadly. And that, that's your goal. That's, that's what you train for. That's what you play for. And... For Cargan, it's a championship or nothing, and we've been very, very lucky. We've won five in this past six years, and the, the feeling doesn't get any less any year. Um, especially this year, whenever it was over our nearest and dearest rivals, Craigan. Um, I would say living the the border between Cargan and Craigan, and some people may argue different, but um, I have a lot of friends that play for them too. So it's it was I wouldn't say it's a sweeter, but it's just it's just nice getting over the line. Um, especially in a game like that, in a game, uh, such a good game, uh, and a game in the melting pot right up to the final whistle, that um, to come out the right side of it, you, you can see the relief and the joy at the final whistle and the players and what it, what it meant to them. Uh, and even what it meant to the people around and the messages you got after from people watching at home and I and family and friends and neighbours who couldn't go for um, limited number and ticket reasons and COVID reasons and everything else and health reasons, it, it brought joy to an awful lot of people who who haven't had that during lockdown and during these recent COVID times that um, the club championship has just been class in, in Antrim and for the people of Antrim and especially for, for us locally, the people of Cargan, um, it, it's been a breath of fresh air and it brought a lot of joy to a, a lot of people and, and that kind of makes it what more sweet as well. Um, we still managed to get the, the tractor and trailer through the village in Tum. Um, later on in the evening time and I stood in the, the trailer at the end of it and I was just taking it in and looking at the crowds that were in the streets, lying in the streets and walking behind us as we, we passed them and I just said to somebody, this is what it's about, this is why you, you play, this is why you train, moments like this and 
So just take it in. It was just sensational, just looking at them. Young people, you're trying to insp- you're inspiring young people in the next generation and waving their flags. But even smiles, the smiles in the faces of the, the older generation, and that bit of a lift that's given them in these times, it, he, he knew what you had done was something special, so it was just class to be part of it. Um, but I was in school the next morning at 9am, uh, the principal in Holy Trinity College in Cookstown, the, the principal was Mrs Russell, was a, a Craig a moment, so she wasn't giving me Monday morning off, but I was glad I could go in, I could have went in with a smile on my face, nice so was it was good. Particularly, I wanted to get you on to ask you about how important this championship was for you since you'd been struggling with injury. Yeah, this championship was a was a big one for me. Um, I'd said I said that post lockdown, if I was still sore, that was me. The, the boots were hung up, and I was happy with that because I knew I'd tried everything to try and get back to full fitness. I've been through the mill with injuries this past couple of years, and. I realistically only played six games in the past two years um, and that was those championship games, quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. Um, I didn't train through those times, I didn't play challenge games, I didn't play league games. Um, I just had massive trust in my manager and there was manager had massive trust in me and, and the physio and everybody that was working together. Uh, I, took, I played those games through painkillers, through injections and I got me through, probably not to the standard that I wanted to be playing myself at. Um, but um, I was just glad that I could be a part of it and, and help the team along the way. But this year was, this year I enjoyed. This year I enjoyed, and that was the big thing. Um, I got back playing injury free, and I got back enjoying football. I came back. I worked damn hard over lockdown and got myself back and able to train with the lads, and got a couple of games under my belt, and a bit of consistency, a bit of performance levels. And enjoyed football, uh, and that was the thing for me was about being back and enjoying it again. But I suppose that's the that's the thing about us now and the culture in our club is that it's not about any individual. As you know, there's somebody ready that's just as good to come in and take your spot in the team. It, it's about the jersey uh, and anything you can do for that jersey and, uh, and anything you can do to help the team uh, and try and get them over the line. So I was just glad I could be a part of it. I wonder, could you explain what the injury you was? The injury uh, is osteo- osteopubis. It's an inflammation of the groin region or the pubic region. Maybe the, the medical experts will, will say I'm wrong or contradict me in what I'm saying, but I, I believe it. you get it when you're growing too fast, when you're younger, or the flip side of it, that your body just can't handle anymore the, the, the abuse that it takes and you're doing too much. And I suppose that's whenever... I broke down was towards the end of the, the county season in 2018, that whenever county and club started to overlap, um, I was going to be carrying a couple of niggles, but my body just couldn't handle it and completely broke down. And the pubic region completely inflamed and it, it just knocked me for six. I, I couldn't run, I couldn't even move. Um, it is known as a long term injury, and, but I didn't expect it to be in the guts of two years. I done everything to try and get back. Um, as I said, I played those. 2018, 2019 club championships solely in painkillers and injections. Um, but I did all the rehab. Marty Locker in the physio and the performance lab in Cookstown. Um, he, he worked very closely with me and the rehab with him. It was excellent. Uh, started yoga. I uh, said I'd take painkillers and injections. I'd done rehab consistently. I uh, went to England to get Lloyd release, a, a specialised surgery for, for the pubic region. Um, I, I basically done everything in my power to try and get back and boy was it tough, it was, I couldn't shake it, I just couldn't shake it but mentally, um, mentally it was a tough one and mentally it's probably my strongest, my strongest aspect is I'm mentally strong or I, I believe that I am and I just stuck at it, I plugged away at it and thankfully over lockdown I, I, it kind of started coming together and I took to the pitch post lockdown whenever we started going the training again. And I didn't know whether it would, whether it would make or break time for me, and, and thankfully it's it's kind of come good. And I just hope and hope and pray that I can maintain a bit of fitness for a while and, and get a few more matches out of myself. But um, that was, it was, a, it was a tough one and one I wouldn't wish on anybody. What could you tell me about the key to winning the final was? There's a number of things. Uh, well, the first thing I would say that. We have, this past couple of years, we have been winning those games we didn't used to win. 
when Everest and Gauls were all Ireland contenders, their, their team was exceptionally good. We were putting them to the pin of their collar, but we couldn't just win. They, they were always came out on the right side of the result. Uh, that Yes, that's the quality of their team that they had at that time. We were awesome at that time too, but they just knew how to win. Uh, and that is a massive, massive thing in, in Gaelic football, that knowing how to win. And so Craig went a couple of points up on us in the final, and I didn't panic. And I just knew that um, I had full confidence in the players that I had alongside me, the people coming off the bench, that a couple of points down, we would win. A couple of points up, we would win. It's a mental thing that we've been through those experiences before. We've been through the Lambdur game in the semi final, the Lambdur game in the replay last year, some goals with Tomas's winning goal in the last kick a couple of years ago. We were just coming through those clutch games. Uh, and I think psychologically and mentally, um, the experiences of being there this past couple of years and coming out on the right side of it, I think stood us massively as well in the final there. The other thing is the, the blend of experience and youth at the minute. We've got a real good blend. We've got a lot of our players are, you would have said, at the, the end of their career, but thankfully with a great strength and conditioning programme with Michael Mallon and CrossFit Antrim and McCann's gym. But um, it's keeping a lot of us, how do you say, hopefully getting us an extra few years. But we've also got unbelievable youth coming through. Um, we've been bringing a couple through every year, and Jamie Gribbon and Kieran Bradley. Kieran Bradley, I think, is 21 and he's five championship medalists, which is just frightening. Um, Pat Shivers, you, you talk to as if he's been an experienced senior for years and you forget he was only minor last year. And then the minors have won back to back and the other 16s are doing well. So for us, as the, the more senior members of the team, you're bringing through young boys every year and you're bringing through quality young boys every year uh, and you're trying to bed them into that culture, that, that environment. Um, where you're, they're driving you on as well, and you're driving them on, and, and it's go everything's going in the one direction. So that that has a big part of it, that that good mix of, of experience and youthfulness, um, because they're bringing that hunger to the to the setup as well, which which is huge. And the final thing I think is very very important is that we're a third year under a new management of not a new manager, a third year under management of Damien Casti, Ron Devlin, and Kevin Doyle, and even like JC Devlin being in there with reserves and being about the senior setup too. Three years down the line, we're three years better off. Every year I can see them adding value to us. And I know, if hopefully, fingers crossed, they stay next year, it'll improve again. Um, it, it's a good management team. It's a management team that has the players eating out of the palm of their hands because you know what they're telling you is trying to improve you. Uh, and they're telling you for the right reasons. Um, smart, experienced men who, who have also been there, done that. Um, and... and Enjoyable being it's enjoyable playing on them, and that that's a huge success. You, you've got people wanting to play for you, and I know the, the players in our team are wanting to play for our management at this moment in time um, because we know that um, they're, they're getting the results, which is massive, obviously. Um, but they're improving us as, as, as a play as individuals and as a team as well, and hopefully that's starting to that's showing on the pitch too. Okay, Cargan have won three in a row. Um... How good do you think they are, and what can they can they go and achieve more? Really, I think we're better than we were three years ago. We're further down the line. We we we're under the processes. We know how to face different tactics and how to uh, how to play and what ways to play. And, and we're almost at the stage now where we can bring that experience from the management onto the pitch and manage it ourselves, um, because we know what they're saying. We know their messages, and we can drive those messages home. But I believe that we. Like every year I've seen improvement under the management and hopefully that they stay on and, and we can improve again and is there improvement in this team? Yeah and because the, the team's evolving all the time the game's evolving all the time and uh, it's up to us to, to move and evolve with it and a big thing that's helping that is, is bringing the youth the youth in and those double one and minor teams and it's not about firing them at the one time but it's getting them in and getting them seeing the culture of the senior setup and what it's like and what it is to play for that jersey and and it's not just easy to walk in a senior team. You have to earn your spot too. But they're bringing that hunger. That they're keeping the seniors on toes, and that that competitiveness is it's it's a it's a huge huge strength to your bow. What can we do more? We I talked earlier on about the the psychological aspect of it that we're winning those clutch games. We haven't won those clutch games in Austria yet. 
and I think that's the goal for us. I, I just hope we can get the, the opportunity to get back there again. Um, you have to start at the very beginning next year and you have to work your way up to that scenario again. But we understand that it can't happen this year because of COVID, obviously, and we're, we're grateful to, to get played what we did get played. Um, but we, we had Cross McLean put to the pin of the colours one year. We had Guidor put to the pin of the colours. Um, we had some goals for years, but we didn't win those games. And, and we, we're now doing it in, at an interim level, but I would love us to get back the opportunity. Just and one more chance to get back to that Ulster setup, that Ulster stage, and be in that scenario, in that clutch game against a, a real top draw side, like a Guidor, like a Cross McLean, or whatever team's coming out of any other county. As you know, they're going to be good. But I believe we have that experience now, now that we can get ourselves through those clutch games at that higher level too. Um, that that's where I would like to get back to. But as you know, you have to you have to go back to the drawing board. You have to go through all the processes and work damn hard and get through another championship again, which isn't easy when you see the the competitiveness of the Antrim one now. But that's that's our aim. That's that'll be our aim next year to get another county title on the board. Um, and. I would just love a, a, a crack at getting through an Ulster campaign. Kevin, what's next for you now? What's what's your plans now for the rest of the year? For me, it's just about maintaining fitness. Uh, I love to tell an eighteen-year-old myself that get to yoga and don't wait for the things like that to start. Um, go and make it happen. And don't be let waiting for the injuries to come along and, and try and fix them and prehab and prevent them. So I'll be going and trying to keep myself flex- flexible. And, um, keep myself fit uh, and be in a position where I can get back onto the pitch and continue playing next year and continue enjoying playing next year and, um, and that, that's really where I'm at and hopefully, hopefully it's a scenario where Covid's away and, and we can play and play properly um, but we, we know we're grateful for what we've got to do this year it's been, it was a hell of a year for the club um, and, and as I say when you're standing in the back of a tractor trailer and you look in the smiles and the faces of all the, the young and old in the village around you uh, and you see what, what joy it brought to them you, you remember why you play Kevin thanks for coming on the show appreciate it thank you our next guest is Shane Carey who is Scottstown captain Scottstown were defeated in last year's county final in Monon when they were going for five in a row but this year they won it back beating Bally Bay in the final so Shane thanks for coming on the show congratulations on winning let's start by asking you how important that win was for Scottsdale? Yeah, what was important about this year's win, I think, number one, definitely for the community, for the year that's in it. Um, I suppose during lockdown and with COVID-19 and, and all the challenges that that present, I think football uh, in our club particularly and, and in other clubs has provided a real focus and an outlet for people to really look forward to, enjoy and talk about. And the fact that we came out in the right side of the result um, and ended up win, winning, winning Monaghan uh, brought a real kind of life to the community and for, for that reason, I think it was really, really important. Secondly, I think it was really important for the group of players. Um, I think like off the back of last year, we weren't happy with how we ended up finishing the year and how we, how we applied ourselves last year. And I think this year it was nice just to get the group of players in together and a lot of young lads coming through. And we, we really, really worked hard this year together. So I think it was really important for that group of players to, 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 win, to win as well. Next question, what's the biggest challenge you faced on the way to this year's final? There's a, there's a number of challenges this particular year. I think the biggest challenge we probably found uh, was keeping players connected um, and, and communicating during the lockdown period. Obviously, we couldn't meet up and train in groups or we couldn't even meet up and train in small groups. It was a case more of just keeping connected through WhatsApp groups, through Zoom calls, um, and even just providing that outlet and a bit of crack for boys to stay connected. Because normally, during football, when things are normal, it, it's true football that you, you're socialising and you're having that bit of crack with the boys. So I think one of the biggest challenges was keeping everyone connected. I'd say the other thing was adapting. Obviously it was a lot shorter, the year was a lot shorter and really adapting to the training and what we're trying to achieve when we came back as a group. Um, and just adapting to the change that was this year and really rolling with it. So I'd say they're the, the biggest challenges. Okay, you were up against Bally Bay in the final who had struggled to beat you in the past few years, but was there a key to winning the title? I suppose there's no real specific key to, to, to winning a final or winning any competition or winning any game for that matter. I think it's a, an accumulation of a lot of small things and just trying to do the, do the right thing all the time um, and hopefully the result will look after itself. Fortunately, the result did look after itself in this case, but many of the times it hasn't. Just like last year when a lot of them small things, maybe we, we didn't look after them and we didn't get the result we deserved. 
Um, so I think, yeah, there's no real key to winning the final. I think it's down to hard work, working with a motivated group of people and really trying to set our own standards and, and look after them small everyday things and hoping, hoping the result looks after itself. What's the biggest lesson or what lessons have you learned this year? Given the year it is and the amount of changes that's happened, I think there's a lot of lessons you can take. I think as a wider organisation, um, how successful a week-on-week -week football was, uh, especially in Monaghan that we saw in the group stages, thought week-on-week -week championship football was brilliant. I think a lot of people and players and managers have been speaking to really, really enjoyed it. I think that's something we've definitely learned from this year. And then I think as, as players and trainers, I think we can learn from that maybe it doesn't take this months and months of collective training to get a team in shape. I think like for the year that's in it, like we a lot of, a lot of people had to train on their own during, due to restrictions, and then when we when, when we were allowed to come back and train smart, um, I think teams still reached that really high level of fitness and um, that they would have in previous years. So I think there's a bit of learning that too for coaches too and players. So yeah, like like any like any year that presents a change or something different, there's always an opportunity uh, to learn off. And I think there are two things we could definitely pick up. Okay, and just finally, what's next? What's 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 next for you this year? Um, obviously, with there being no provisional club championships this year, uh, that's that's the end of the club season, um, unfortunately. So, uh, looking forward to myself personally getting back into the Monon team and training hard there and seeing where seeing where we can go with that group of players. Uh, really looking forward to that challenge and getting back in with the boys there. Uh, but from the club side, obviously, we're finished up for the year and it'll be a case of regrouping again and getting the work done and going again next year. Again, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it and congratulations again. Okay, that's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, I think if there's one lesson to learn, it's that the GA has brought some joy to a lot of clubs this year, and it's been important during this rough time of the lockdown and the pandemic. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for my guests for taking part. If you want to watch more shows, um, you can get them all online at gaeliclife.com or on NVTV. I would also encourage you to subscribe to the Gaelic Life website. Um, we're a digital title now and um, we can get us online you can read us on pdf or on the website so i encourage you to do that thanks for watching and we'll see you again very very soon thanks